I know this will probably hurt someone's feelings, but in today's devotion, we're talking about signs. Stop looking for signs. Quit looking at the Shroud of Turin, Noah's Ark, some new archaeological discovery. Stop looking for signs in the heavens, signs of the times, signs all around you. Quit looking for signs. Jesus said, a wicked and perverse generation seeks after a sign. And I don't know about you, but I think that a personal conversation with God might be a little more of a sign than the actual idea of finding Noah's Ark up on Ararat or finding the Shroud of Turin to be false or discovering that there's an ossuary that might have Jesus' name on it. Do you realize how desperate that sounds to a person who knows God and is intimate with him? Do you realize how foolish that is to God himself when he said, no, I'm not going to give you a sign. And then you turn around and you go, but, 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 I want one. And he goes, no, but, 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 I want one. And he says, no. So if Jesus said no, what are we doing asking for a sign? Why are you looking for these things to be true? It's dumb. <laughs> I mean, no, according to Jesus, is no. And if he changes his mind, then he isn't Jesus, <laughs> to put it bluntly, because he said no. He said no sign would be given. If that's no sign, then we need to understand the word is blunt and the sign is not. Because you see, if you can be misled, or if you could be led by signs and wonders, then you're just following Jesus. Because Jesus at some point in time told the crowds, look, you come after me because you want to seek after a sign, and you want to seek after a wonder. But he said, destroy this temple, and in three days I'll raise it again. So he warned them ahead of time that he was going to literally die and be risen from the dead. And that would be the only sign that would be given. The same as he said that Jonah, when he went into the belly of the whale, likewise the Son of Man would go into the belly of the earth and then would come again, would be raised from the dead. And no other sign would there be for the Son of Man, the Son of God, to be revealed. I think that's a little bit serious, and I think God was being a little bit blunt there. So, Christian, what are you doing with going after signs. Isn't that kind of like saying, God, your word is not good enough. Your fact that you rose from the dead is not good enough. I don't care that it's a fact that you rose from the dead. I want more. Demonstrate to me how true you are and how real if you're going to be my Lord and my God. Religion would say something like that. Are you religious? Because religion needs to keep proving itself in the fulcrum and the examination room of provable means. They always want to put down on the table and examine from every possible angle to disprove something in order to prove something. Rather than accept that God has revealed something and then prove what it is that he wants us to do with it, Science has chosen to go the opposite extreme and instead of saying, now we know this is true because God said it, let's see how it works out in our life. Science seeks to disprove or to put into the, the laboratory the examination of all aspects to prove the exceptions or the rules or some kind of regulation that they can put into a formula and then duplicate the same process that they see that God has done. And that's why some science is not necessarily good. If science seeks to prove or to valid, science is validated by the scriptures, not science validating the scriptures. Do you see? In other words, if science comes to a conclusion that the Bible says, then it's valid in the sense of that the Bible led the person to the provable means of truth, but not that truth needs to be proved through science. That's not the way it works. God reveals himself and then science says, this is how he did it. That's all. So the reality of seeking after a sign is stupid because it's just religion. 
It's just seeking after a mental assertion that has nothing to do with the spiritual dimension. The spiritual dimension is that God reveals himself as he chooses to and according to his word, in his time, his will, his way, which he has done. He said, I will rise again. Three days. And they marked the days. They even went so far as to try to disprove it and proved it true. They tried to guard against it and they couldn't. They tried to invalidate it and it was impossible. So no sign would be given except for the rising of the dead of Jesus Christ. So don't go after some sign that you see, some, gosh, I don't know, some cloud in the sky or some, <laughs> there's so many signs out there that people use and abuse and confuse and, you know, are led by or misled by whatever it is that they think that they're doing that God wants you to have a personal relationship with him so that it would be a conversation with him that you would be able to ask him personally to reveal himself and that he would between you and him. He can lift you up out of the physical world and take you to where he dwells as opposed to you looking for a sign where you dwell. In other words, why should God come down when he already has, when he wants to lift you up out of the muck that you're in? Do you see the difference? One would say, hey, you know what? I'm wallowing in the pit. You know, it's kind of a cesspool down here. And I want everybody else to come down in with me, you know, and wallow around in it. And then I want to see if, you know, maybe I can get cleaned up while I'm wallowing in the pit. And God says, hey, you know what? If you want to talk to me, come up here. You know, I'll, I'll lift you up. I'll clean you up. I'll set you on high. I'll show you things that you never believed possible. I'll reveal to you even myself. And so your choice is whether you will seek after a sign or you will seek after the Lord himself. And that's the difference. Are you seeking the Lord or are you seeking a sign? Do you really want to follow the religious idea or do you want to know God personally? If you want to know him personally, you quit seeking signs and you seek the Lord directly. O Lord, thou art here, let us feel thy nearness. I am here, do not need feeling too much. To ask for feeling too much is to ask for a sign. And then the answer is the same that I gave while on earth. There shall no sign be given but the sign of the prophet Jonas. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the belly of the whale, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Veiled from sight to the unbeliever, to the believer the veiling is only temporary, to be followed by a glorious resurrection. What does it matter what you feel? What matters is what I am, was, and ever shall be to you, a risen Lord. The feeling that I am with you may depend upon any passing mood of yours upon a change of circumstances, upon a mere trifle. I am uninfluenced by circumstance. My promise given is kept. I am here, one with you, in tender, loving friendship. Feelings fly as fast as your mind thinks of them and conceives of them and changes with any passing moment. You could one minute be in debt and get some devastating news about how you're going to be foreclosed in the next minute. Let's just say you won the lottery. and What would you do? You'd be jumping up and down for joy. So where did the feeling go? How did it change from one minute, you're completely in debt and devastated, the next minute you're out of debt and free? Do you see the reality of how feelings are? They don't have much to do with the facts. The facts and the circumstances are such that you can't base your faith upon feelings. Faith has to always put itself into the confidence of knowing the person it's putting its faith in. And when you know who God is, when you have a proper understanding of God himself, when you have that dynamic personality living in you, then you know by experience, by faith, and by demonstration, provable means that you have proven that God is real and alive in your life, that God is there no matter what your feelings are. I mean, I always tell people, hey, look, if you don't feel like God is near, go eat a candy bar. <laughs> I mean, let's get real. Come on. If it's faith that you need, great, then read the word of God. But if it's feelings you need, then go eat a candy bar. Because you can change your feelings just as fast as you can go up on a new power drink high or crash and burn as fast as that wears off. Because those are what can influence the physical body. But the fruit of the spirit, peace, love, and joy, aren't necessarily feelings, but they are established realities in the spirit caused by God himself inside of you. 
And you can know constant peace even in the midst of your feelings changing. You could still love even though your feelings may change. You can still have joy even in the midst of trials and tribulations and being depressed. Now it sounds contradictory and it sounds like kind of schizophrenia, but it is true because it's a fact that those fruits of the Spirit are never listed as feelings. They're listed as fruits of the Spirit. So there's a difference between what we call love, feeling love, and that's what we use in our physical body when we acknowledge it through our soul and our mind and our physical flesh, as opposed to the kind of love that's deep inside that God has placed there by his spirit that comes from his spirit to our spirit and joins with it into being unified with God to know him so that we can love in the midst of our feelings. You can feel any way you want to. And you can change that just by physical choice in your mental assertion. You can determine within yourself to choose to feel a certain way. And then you can actually convince yourself of it. Or you can reject the whole idea that feelings are going to rule you, but that you're going to be led by your faith in God alone. Because once you trust in him in that way, then you know that regardless of the feelings, God is always with you, no matter what the circumstances may say, no matter what your feelings may do, and no matter what choices you make. So recognize always that your life is about you and God and not about signs, not about wonders, and not about feelings. It's about you and God alone.